So here's a situation where I paralleled my lithium battery and my lead acid battery. And here is the lead acid battery reading here. And right here is my lithium battery. So it's reading 13.14, which is about the same. And you can see here I'm charging on tr solar, uh, so 0.8 amps. And this is for the lithium battery. And um, so what I'm going to do now is go over to the lead acid battery, which is 240 batteries, and it's charging at 0.3. So what's happening is the lithium battery is secondary um, and the primary is this, this battery. And you can see here, I've been sitting here overnight um, and uh, it's, it's been, um, that's just my other, that's the total amp hours down I am. But it, it's been charging, lithium battery has charge, been charging this battery all night. So it is not drained down very much. The lead acid battery is up. And then what's been happening with the lithium battery is it has been discharging. So 30 amps overnight is what it, it was running the refrigerator and everything. So the lithium battery has been taking all the the current here, been taking all the amp hour load, and the um, lead acid bar battery is relatively, um, been relatively unharmed. In fact, when I charge it, the lead acid battery is the thing that goes up, okay? So here's a case, I probably got some load here. Okay, the refrigerator click kicked on now. So I've got um, 147 of load, right? So now you can see the lead acid battery is 1295, right? And the lithium, lithium battery is still at its 1313. So here's an example where um, the lithium battery pretty much keeps its 13.1 or whatever it's um i've probably got about 75 percent capacity left in the lithium battery but you'll find that the um the lead acid battery goes low will go low under load question might be when do you parallel when would you parallel the lithium and the lead acid now this is the lead acid um, you can see that right now I'm 99.3 percent um, of capacity on this thing I mean I'm it's fully charged so it's right now charging it 0.3 amps and that's about all that this battery would take if I uh, if I just had it by itself right it would just take and put it on a charger it would probably only charge at 0.3 amps possibly so what I'm what I'm thinking is it's okay well it's less dangerous to parallel your lead acid and your lithium batteries if you're at a high state of charge you know if you're in the high 90s you know I'm guessing that and I'm not an expert but I'm guessing that that probably would be an okay time if you're in 99 percent of you know that's probably pretty safe to parallel the batteries and you can parallel them and probably um, do okay with that okay now not for charging though i think charging would be another possible problem so charging i think what you're going to want to do is you know you don't want to charge the lithium this this um lead acid battery will go to 
um, can be charged at 14 volts, right? And these these lithium lithium batteries don't don't like to go to 14. I take my lithium battery to 13.8. So right now I'm on solar charger. I would set my solar charging limit to 13.8, and um, you know it, I would not run a charger a lead acid charger charger on these battery banks when they're parallel. And again, I'm not an expert, but that's kind of what I'm assuming. So here's the system that I'm uh, setting up for an experiment. This is basically my lithium system, but it's a little bit abbreviated. I've got a uh, 200 amp hour flooded bank and I'm keeping my charging systems the same. 14.4 uh, alternator, Balmar, 100 amp. And I'm keeping my shore power charger the same. I've got a Xantrex 40 amp that's <coughs> set for lead acid configuration. And then I've got some solar chargers I can program to be 13.8 or 14.4 for lead acid and I've got a Y connector on that that so I can charge either the lithium bank or I can charge the uh, flooded bank here so I've also got a battery to battery charger that I use to charge up my lithium so in this in this scenario, what I've done is I'm charging the flooded lead acid batteries to about 90% state of charge. So without any load on them, you might read the voltage at around 12.8 or something like that. Uh, and then I charge my lead acid, I mean my uh, lithium batteries, my uh, LiPo 4 batteries before my trip I try to get them up to about 90% state of charge and the idea here is um, you've got you've already got a flooded bank and maybe you just add some lithium you don't have to add that much lithium but you are ha perfectly happy with your flooded batteries and you're just going to add some lithium batteries and you as long as your flooded bank is a pretty high state of charge, you can combine the lithium and the flooded uh, and run your DC loads panel from it, your refrigerator and whatever. So that's what I'm kind of looking at right now with this. I normally just run my lithium off the DC loads panel but in this experiment I actually combined these two batteries and ran overnight with a combined uh, a combined system and uh, for safety I uh, my lithium bank I've got an on off switch there and this is normally like I say it's normally one or two it's not combined and then for the solar charger you want to make sure that you if you've got these com these uh, banks combined just to be safe I'm running at 13.8 so should you do this I'd say um, I'm just a guy on the internet I'm not an expert and a YouTube guy and I'd say you need to do a lot more research before you can you know get comfortable with this system I'm just showing this just as uh, kind of a thought-provoking way to say look you could probably add a hundred amp hours here if you wanted to or 50 amp hours of lithium and augment your flooded uh, lead acid battery bank and it would probably cause your flooded lead acid battery to be in uh, better shape it could anyway but again you're gonna need to do a little more research on this